right. So let us go back through quickly the concepts for decoder and multiplexer because it will show up on future homeworks and uh, quizzes and stuff like that. Hint, hint, hint. Again, the truth table for a decoder is to understand what it uh, understand what it does. And this was from the last class that when you have an enable, when the enable is zero, the outputs are all zero. When you have the enable of one, depending on the value that is input, <clears throat> if you input the value of zero, you get a one on the output. Or if you input the uh, a value for uh, zero, your one will be on the D0 output. In the same way, if you input the number three, one, one, then the output will be on the D3 bit for the output. Then also, I went through a multiplexer. A multiplexer was simply, depending on what the input of S1 and S0 are, it will allow data to be passed from the input 0, 1, 2, or 3 to the, uh, um, to the output D. So in this case, no matter what input for I0 is, that will be passed through if we set S1 and S0 to those devices. That's why the output is identified as whatever is input. If 1 is input, then 1 will be passed through. If the value logical zero is input, then logical zero will be passed through. The motivation for this, I gave an example of an adder, and I think I'm going to go through adders again because I'm not sure uh, to what detail Dr. Uh, uh, Medrikar went and did it. So this is an example I didn't like. So let's see if I could do something else. Hmm. Well, here, here's a, a good example. Is I could use several multiplexers together. And maybe I have a number A, which is bits A0, A1, A2, and A3 and B, and I want to choose one or the other. So S is going to be zero if I'm interested in what A is, and S zero will be the value of one if I want to interested in what the value in B is. And remember, those are just passed through. And so these individual multiplexers is simply going to be a can be represented by a larger multiplexer like this. This is, um, this is also when I showed you an example of, yeah, if I have a thicker line with a slash through it with a number, that says that I have a bus of a particular size, in this case, four bits. And as an example, I have uh, maybe all sorts of different things that I want to see on my car's display right above me. Maybe I want to see what the current temperature is, or the average miles per gallon, or the instantaneous miles per gallon, or the miles remaining in my tank. And each one of those is 8-bit wide of data. Then what I could do is I can say, depending on what my input is, I can, uh, I can actually, uh, using a button, switch between uh, which one of those inputs I look at. So I use an 8-bit 4 to 1 MUX. In other words, 8 bits are going into my box, and I'm going to select these 8 bits, those 8 bits, these 8 bits, or these 8 bits, depending on my two inputs, X and Y, meaning the value of zero, 0, 
would be identifying the temperature would be displayed on my display. So that would be the example of uh, in here, we'll just use this button to say it's either going to be 00, 01, 10, or 11, and that will allow one of these things to come through, whether it be temperature or the miles remaining. Now, one thing I should mention is that there is typically a difference in time as to how the gate works. Now, I alluded to this earlier, but this is an example I need to mention, is that ideally you would think that here's my OR gate, right? X or Y will be output as F. And one would expect that if I suddenly change in my input here, 1, so in other words, I now have the input of 1, 0, I would expect the output to be instantaneous. Well, that doesn't happen in the real life because there's a lot of hardware, in other words, transistors, in the process, and that takes a little bit of time for that signal to propagate through that entire gate. And so what you're really going to see is not only is it going to delay, but it's not going to be this nice this nice square wave or this nice quickly uh, rise up in voltage, more realistic will be gradually getting up there, but you know, this may be a matter of three nanoseconds. So three nanoseconds is very, 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 very fast, right? But it still happens. So with a delay, but otherwise ideal, might be something that would uh, go up as a square wave, but it would still take some time to do it. So the answer is the outputs don't change immediately after the inputs change. That's what you need to remember. You don't really need to worry if this is an S-like curve. Just worry that it's a, uh, uh, a delay, but it will have some sort of... Uh, um, increase. Now, one thing I should add is you've done the simulations for lab one and lab two. Did it show it happened immediately or, or was there some sort of delay? Oh my gosh, you don't know which way it was. Yes, no? The waves were right after the like almost immediately, right? Because this is a simulator and this is not real hardware. So what you would expect would be the characteristic like this. Now the one thing that you could do in these simulations is to actually add in it some sort of realistic delay of what you would expect it to be like, how much time you would expect it to take from your input changing to your output changing. And the tools allow you to do that. I'm not going to talk about that today in, in detail, but the tools allow you to do that. Now the reason why that might make a difference is as follows. By the way, wires also have some sort of delay in them too, because Wires have a distance, and it takes a distance for it to be uh, computed. So let's take a look at this. If I were to look at these signals, and I were to see the longest path through it would be which one? Well, actually, I believe it would be this one, right? S is one nanosecond plus five nanoseconds through this gate plus one nanosecond through the wire plus one nanosecond through the gate plus one nanosecond through that wire plus one nanosecond through the gate plus one nanosecond through there is one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Compare that with K, which is one, two, 
3, 4, 5. So what that means is that you may have a situation where you'll have what we call a glitch. In other words, a signal might have a temporary time in which it changes. And in fact, if you look at T, there's another difference as well. The circuit's delay is 6.5. So let's look at an example of this, and I'm going to have you work on this. Let's say, and I want you to, uh, I want you to figure this out with one of your neighbors over the time at one nanosecond, at, I should say at zero nanoseconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, We want to look at what the value of W is going to be. So make the assumption that everything is going to be zero except for S at one point is going to be the value of one. So we'll, uh, we'll all assume that your inputs when before we even start is this. All right? So what's going to be the value of W? Well, this is 1 is uh, knotted to make 0. 0 and 0 and 0 is 0. Pass that into uh, this OR gate and that is 0, so the output is 0. All right? So W starts at zero at time zero. We'll make that assumption. All right? So this is the value of zero. This is the value of one right there. If suddenly at the same time I change this to one, one, zero, one. So this is at time negative one and at time equal to zero, that's what I change it to. What are you going to see on the output W after one nanosecond, two, three, four, five, six, and seven as time goes on? So shall I question? Why is the first one S one? Oh, this is S one nanosecond. So, and I just added this one because I wanted all these to be zero, just for grins, all right? So maybe I should look at this, all right? At time equals to one, what's the value at the input of this AND gate at this point right here? One. What's the, at one known a second, what's the input to this AND gate? One. <coughs> at one nanosecond, what's the input to this? Zero. Because at one nanosecond, this is one. But it hasn't gone through this gate or traveled in that wire. And at one nanosecond, what is the input to this gate right there? One. And you know what? I want to make this zero because that makes the problem more interesting. This will be zero. Question? Yes? So why do you have the, the zero of the one and only zero? All right. So at time equals zero, all of these inputs are, as I said, 1, 1, 0, 
0. That's at t equals 0. And remember, this is t equals to minus 1. So right before we start timing it. So at t equals 1, we have all of these values in red. At t equals 2, what are our values going to be? Well, in this case, this is 1, 1, 0, correct? Through the AND gate after 1 nanosecond, this output is now going to be 0. And at 2, this value here is going to be, um, oh, sorry, I meant to, yeah, this was, this should have been zero right there, by the way. So somewhere along this lines, this is going to turn into 1, but it won't be there yet, right? And at this point, at that exit, we're going to have the value of 0, and 0 where 0 is 0. So at time equals to three, what do we have? We have zero here. We have zero as the output. You agree with that? But also, by this time, we have one here. At time equals, I'm running out of colors. Let's see, I'll pick this one. Time equals to 4. This now goes through and this becomes 1. Everything remains the same. At time equals to 5, we have one that now has made its way here, and so this is a one. Time equals to six. The OR gate has exited, and that's now a one. And at time equals to seven, That's not a good color. Let's pick another one. Magenta. This one is now propagated, and so at time seven is when we get the increase. Actually, it'll be at 6.5. So before that time, it was all zero. Does everybody understand that? Yes? Yes? We're only changing uh, where it starts at one nanosecond. Um, mm -hmm. You've got to say that again. So were we only changing, like going through the one that was 6.5 nanoseconds, where the other one stayed constant? Yeah, I think to make life easy, I'm just going to change this to one nanosecond so you don't have to worry about exactly where it does and. and Stuff like that. So everything pretty much stays the same except this, since it takes so long 
to propagate through, it'll take seven nanoseconds, right? Now, I want you to look at the following. All right, does everybody understand this? Because I'm going to take this picture away. Yes? So, like, what were the input values for, say, t equals 3? All right, t equals 3 would be this purple. So that is 0. That is 1. This is still 0. I think to make this really, really clear, I should have this as uh, seven different pictures, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm trying to think, you know what, I'm going to redo this. I'm going to do the following, and i got to write this down first, so... this is what we said, what we showed? Yeah. Yes? All right. I'm going to make the following assumption. Wires don't have delays. All right. The only delays you're going to see here will be one, on, one nanosecond for each gate. Is that a realistic estimate? Um, it all depends on the, the, the technology I mean, there's something called TTL, CMOS, NMOS, PMOS, et cetera, et cetera. So one nanosecond, you know, actually all the parts say what it is. I think I've seen it closer to 1.8 nanoseconds. Now, of course, in the end, a lot of modern design is being done with FPGAs now anyhow, which is a different timing device altogether. So I'm just using this as an example so you could look at it and say, okay, now I understand what is meant by delays. All right? And I need lots of different colors for this one. So let's do a better example. So I'm going to do the following, and I'm going to do the full chart and let you look what, what this is. By the way, is, what's the output name? We call it W, okay? So let's take a look at time equals negative 1. Time equals zero, time equals one, time equals two, time equals three, time equals four, just for grins. We have the inputs of K, P, S, T. We have our output of W. And I am going to name the following. These are intermediate outputs, A and B. Now, let's assume that we started with the following. All right, we are back. And uh, let's go back through this problem again. And let's do a better job of it this time. First of all, let's assume a steady state. It's been like this for a while. So if S is 1, what would we have expected A to be? In the gate, it's, it's, uh, it's a not gate, right? So it would become a zero. If we have an input to our AND gate, 
which is 0 and 0 and 0, we would expect the output, this is B and this is the output A, we would expect the output for B to be 0, right? And by the way, since we have T is 1 and the output of B is 0, I'm sorry, the output of B is 0, T is 1, the output from our OR gate would be 1. And this is a steady state, so, you know, it'll be 1 that time, T we haven't changed yet, um, K is 0, P is 0, S is 1, and then we would also have expected that those don't change. Now, the assumption is that we have a one nanosecond delay for each of our gates. So if at one particular time I suddenly say K, I'm changing to 1. P, I'm changing to 1. S, I'm changing to 0. And T, I'm changing to 0. We need to look at what is going to happen with each one of the inputs. So, first of all, what will A be? The value for A, whatever is here, depends on whether whatever the output from of A is going to depend on whatever S was one nanosecond ago. One nanosecond ago, S was one. So the expectation is this will remain zero. Now in fact, let's just look at the changes. Based on what S was in the next time frame, after it propagates through the gate, what would you expect a to be now? One. And in fact, since I said we don't change S from there on out, that's zero, 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 the expectation is that A will remain one, one, and you know, if we kept on going, the next time frame it would be one. So it's important to note that the delay of one nanosecond affects the, uh, the value as it comes out of the gate. Now, let's take a look at B. B is going to be dependent on K, P, and A in this case, right? So let's take a look at KP and A. At this point, 0, 0, and A will affect what B is going to be. So at this point, 0 and 0 and 0 is still 0, correct? So it's still zero. Now at this time, we have one and one and zero. One and one and zero would still mean zero. And as I said before, we're going to expect these to remain one. Now let's look at the next one. 
1 and 1 and 1 now makes this equal to 1. Correct? And to be honest, it will remain the same because we'll always have We'll always have 1 and 1 and 1, 1 and 1 and 1, 1 and 1 and 1. So these will remain 1 throughout. So our final bit to look at is going to be W. So W is going to be based on the output from B and T. See the output, and it's going to be an OR, correct? So let's look at this. 0 or 1 is 1. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? Yes, no? But look at the next one. Now we have 0 or 0, and that will yield, that will yield 0. <laughs> By the way, t is never going to change, so I'll just write zeros down for all of this. Now let's look at the next one. 0 or 0 is? Zero. But now, this is where it gets interesting. Now it's one or zero is one. One or zero is one. And that's how you will need to go through any of these with gate delays. And this is why doing it as a, uh, um, in a simulation is a lot easier because it does it for you. But one thing I want you to note is what happened. It was at 1, then it went down to 0. This is our eventual output, W. It was at 1, went down to 0, then it went back up to 1 went back up to 1, right? And this is typically called a glitch. And that's because of specific delays that you're going to have the, um, you're going to have a different operation of your digital logic for just a small amount of time. Now we're going to see examples later when we start working with sequential circuits where this will really, really get to you. So does everybody understand this process? Where's, where's my uh, person in the back who, yes or no? Yeah, right. <laughs> Question. So, on T after T0, you explain why you changed it again? All right, first of all, at T0, what I did is I changed my inputs. Because I want to change my inputs, right? Because I changed my inputs, a lot of the functionality of my gates, I got different outputs, right? Maybe I should take this through an even simpler example.
So let's say I have A and B and C. This is, you can't be any simpler than this, right? And again, this has a one nanosecond delay. And A is going to be 1, and B is going to be 1. Actually, I'm going to make B be 1 all throughout. It's an input, right? But at this point, I'm going to change the input of A. Now, let's take a look at the output C. Assuming that this has been 1 and 1 for the whole time, what is 1 and 1? One. And so now, if we look at this, well, you know, one and one will make this one. One and one make this over here one. Because again, we have a delay. This edge right here didn't change, and so this remains 1 over here. Notice that even though I changed my inputs for the AND gate, A is now 0 and B is now 1, it takes a nanosecond for that to propagate through the gate itself. So, based on that, I now have 0 and 1. So what does that mean that the AND gate output is going to be? zero. Because it takes one nanosecond to propagate through, I've propagated that zero and one through the gate and now my answer will be zero and it'll actually be zero for uh, uh, a lot of time until I change one of the inputs. The important thing I want you to note is as follows. Look, at this point in time, even though the input's 0 and 1 for my AND gate, it's going to take 1 nanosecond to propagate that through to the output C. You got that, right? Yes? Okay, how's, how's, my, uh, how's my canary back there? All right, thumbs up. You didn't know you were canary, did you? No. <laughs> you, you're familiar with the concept canary in a coal mine, right? You, you, you know what it is? So, you know why, why they talk about canary in a coal mine? Really? You've, have you ever heard of that phrase? All right. Um, in, historically, in coal mines, they didn't have electronic sensors to tell when there were carbon monoxide and other type of poisonous gases inside. So what they would do is they would take a canary into coal mines, and canaries were very sensitive to the air. If the air was bad, like it would kill you, it would kill the canary first. So if the canary died, you would run like, like the devil out of that coal mine because that means there were poisonous gases inside. So in other words, uh, coal miners had lots and lots of canaries that they would take in one at a time and they would tell them if they were about to die. Isn't that kind of morbid? Yeah, well, you know, that's what you get when you don't have, uh, when you don't have electronic uh, carbon monoxide uh, uh, sensors. So now, those of you who are fans of the uh, rock group Police know what that uh, song means, right? You probably don't even know what that song is. It exists anyhow, right? <laughs> All right. So just to verify that you know what's going on, Thank you. 
a slightly more complex version. So you have A, I'll even do this easier. You have B as one of your inputs. You have D, which is intermediate, and then you have A. I am definitely going to put this on an exam or quiz. If I start with If I start with this concept right here, everybody understand this, right? B is one of my inputs, starts out as zeros. A starts out at one, actually A never changes. At time equals zero, I change the input of B to a one. Complete this table. Turn to your neighbor and figure it out. All right, here we are. Let's start up. So let's look at D. D is the output from the gate. So we'll just solve that first. This 1 or this 0 is converted into that 1. This 0 will be converted into a 1. This 0 will, or this 1 will be converted into a 0. 0, 0, 0. That's for the gate D. We have one gate delay. There you go, right? So it's a D, 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 and then D is zero. Now let's look at the output from the AND gate. The AND gate, we're looking at uh, one and one is one. One and one is one. 1 and 1 is 1. Now at this point is 0 and 1 is 0. And then there'll all be 0 after that. So we went 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the important thing to note, and that's the whole concept that I want you to look at, is there's how many gate delays from B to C? 2. So that means it will take two nanoseconds before a change is made. Question? I thought you said there wasn't a delay until after a second. Yeah. And you, you like those two things over DNA were... Well, zero is where I changed the thing, right? So I said at zero, that's when we change. And so look at this, from zero to two, there is the change from there to there because there's two de gate delays, one's through this gate, one through that gate. Okay? Does that answer your question or make you sad? No, I mean, I got it right. Okay. We are almost done with this chapter. Wow, this took forever. <clears throat> now, sometimes with logic, there are what we call active low input. So you know how we said, oh yeah, if you have a one there, that's when it's really, when it's worthwhile and, and things work. Well, in this case, we can have, what does this device look like? Is this an encoder or a decoder? All right, let's look back. 
Does it look like a multiplexer? Lots of inputs, one output, or does it look like a decoder? Many inputs, one output. Or some inputs, a lot more output. So it's a decoder. So in this case, sometimes, rather than a active high signal, you have what's called an active low signal. So you see this bubble on the input? That means that whenever you input a zero, that's when it will be active. And that's important to note because in digital logic, sometimes it makes a lot more sense to have it as an active low. So re just remember that. By the way, you have, should already be familiar with this. We've done schematic capture and we've done simulation with our labs. So the whole idea is that given your particular inputs, you should expect a certain output. What does this look like? What kind of a device? Looks like a decoder, right? So in general, we did combina uh, combinational circuits, gates, etc. All right? We are now getting ready to go into the next chapter, which is sequential logic. So I would like you to start reading chapter 3. That's it. Thank you very much.